Sun's out, gun's out. Or sun's out, gun's out. Or you can also say sun's out, bun's out. But it's not the type of buns that you're thinking about. All right, so get your mind out the gutter and let's come back. Let's bring it back in. So today, so it is the summertime and, you know, people like to get summertime fine. But for teachers, this is our time to be able to get out in the sunlight instead of in the classroom. And as a teacher, as a PE teacher, personally, there's a lot of things that teachers should be doing that they aren't doing during the school year. Now, during the school year, there's a little... There's a lot of things that I'm doing personally. I'm actually currently working two full-time jobs. If you want to know more about that experience, you can check out this video right here. So you can give you more of a backstory about where I'm coming from. But since this is the summertime, I have a little bit more time to be able to dedicate to posting more on YouTube. So in this video, we're going to be discussing different tips that teachers can be doing during the summertime to be physically fit. Okay, so you'll be able to fit it in during the summertime so you'll be summertime fine. So when the fall comes back around, when we go back to school, you have a head start to removing that pouch that you gained over the course of the year. All right. And then you can establish some habits going into the school year so then you can continue on that for momentum because consistency is the only cheat code. OK, so there's going to be four different tips that I'm going to give you to stay physically fit during the summertime specifically. OK, because you have more time. If you have kids, you have more time that you can spend with your kids. And kids can be very integral in the way that you're able to be able to stay fit during the summertime. So I'm going to go ahead and start that off and integrate kids into it. And number one is going to be play. Play is one of those things that we did as a child, but somehow as adults, we stopped doing over the course of time. Now, play is just when you gather together and you just do random acts of physical activity. It can be considered exercise, but when you're playing, you're not you're creating rules as you go along and you're going from one activity to another. And the best example of play is going to the playground. And if you have children, you see them playing on the playground or if you're a teacher, you have them on recess. You, you just take them outside and you let them do them. They create their own rules. They create their own structure. And this is one of the ways that students can be able to model social modeling and socialize in a respectful way. Now, of course, there's a teacher there to be able to guide if something goes awry, but for the most times, for the most part, students are pretty much handling themselves fairly well, and they do a fairly well job of doing that. So if you see them on, you may see them playing uh, unilaterally, or they may, they may do parallel play. Specifically, this is for like two kids that really don't know each other. So you see like a kid go to the playground and they see other kids playing. They see one kid swinging and then they'll start swinging alongside them. And then what you'll see is they'll start playing parallel, parallel. And then eventually they'll intersect or they'll interact with one another. And then that's when they'll, be, they'll develop different friendships or really just playing with people that are around them. And as adults, we tend to lose that as a result. So there's different things or different ways that you can play as an adult. Uh, for example, my sister, she just went on a trip to go hiking, to go to the waterfalls. She's in Nashville. She's going to Cookville, so that's going to be like an hour drive. So they're going to go see a waterfall, and that's for like a mile and a half hike. And then I'm pretty sure when they get to the waterfall, they don't have any damn, anything planned. So that's going to be a form of play, which is exercise. So they'll be jumping from the waterfalls, swimming in a, in a lake. Is it the lake? I'm not sure. But they're going to be swimming alongside the waterfalls, stream, river. I'm not exactly sure what part of a body of river uh, or a body of water a waterfall is connected to. More than likely, it's going to be a river or a stream. But if you know that, put that down below and help me out. Okay. But there's going to be different things that they're going to be doing simultaneously that's not structured. They're going to be doing a lot of play along the way. All right. And then that's going to be unorganized exercise. All right. So it's going to be number one, play. All right. The second thing that you can do is walk, be able to walk more. And the best times to be able to walk are during the sunrise and sunset. And that's because the sun rays are going to be less harsh on your skin because the sun isn't all the way up and it's not vibrating as 
as high, as high as it would if it was like midday. So it's not gonna be as high and it's gonna be more protective to your skin. And it's also going to be good for your eyes because during this time you want to be able to go out into this going to the sun to be able to increase your melatonin which is going to increase your your uh circadian rhythm which is going to help your sleep cycle and basically your sleep cycle is letting you know when it's time to wake up and when it's time to go to sleep and because it's a rhythm just like the rhythm of the sun it goes up you want to be up and when it goes down you want to be down so this is going to be able to help your body get into a rhythm of getting up in the morning and then going to sleep. Now I'm in Memphis, so my sunrise is somewhere around like 5.30, 6 o'clock. And usually I'm up during that time because I am still working full time uh, at one of the largest employers at nighttime. And if you wanna know, know more information, there's a link that I'll put in, down in the description so you can be able to follow that as well. Okay. train of thought and one of the benefits of increasing your melatonin is that it increases your levels of vitamin D in which 42% of Americans are deficient in vitamin D now, there are several ways that you can get vitamin D and I'll go ahead and read a list of the ways that you go that you'll be able to get it so number one is be able to spend more time in sunlight number two consume fatty fish and seafood so getting your omega-3s in will be a good way Number three, eat more mushrooms. Four, include egg yolks in your diet. Now, because it's the summertime, I have more time to cook, so I'm cooking breakfast every single morning. So I'm making sure that I get the baker's dozen of eggs. It's really not the baker's dozen. It's just a dozen of eggs. Actually, it's 18. So I, is that the baker's dozen? Basically, I'm getting 18 eggs like every single week, and I'll eat like three or four every single day. And then I eat some egg whites to make sure that I'm getting just some additional protein as well. Number five is be able to eat fortified foods. So foods that are fortified or enriched in vitamin D. Enriched, not enriched, okay? So you never want to be able to drench your food in ranch, okay? That's gonna be a bad, healthy, unhealthy habit that you're going to form during the summertime if you're eating salads and different things of that nature. And a tip to when you're eating salads, do something that's light and Light and dressing, so it's, it would be something like uh, something that's that, so stay away from creamy and go for more fluid, so like more balsamic vinaigrette or a light Italian, something that's more so watery than something that's oil based rather than something that's in ranch, like ranch or creamy Italian, something of that nature, or a thousand island. Okay, so the lighter and more fluid it is, the better it's going to be for you. Uh, number six is to take a supplement. Now, supplements are sup are supplements to your nutrition. Okay, so don't let this be your main thing. Okay, you want the supplement to be the side thing. Some that you see from time to well, no, pause, pause. Are you tired of being tired of not having enough energy to last you throughout the day? Are you one at at work, too drained to go to the gym, or too sluggish to play with your kids, and too tired to hang out with your friends and your family? Don't worry, you're not the only one. In fact, one in three Americans struggle with having enough energy to last throughout the day. But there's good news because you can change all that by focusing on your gut health. Did you know that your gut has good and bad microbiomes that grow inside of it? And the more that you feed the good, the healthier and livelier that you feel. When you feed the bad ones over time, you start to feel bad, then sad, and it turns into a fad that you feel like you can't escape. And it becomes your personality, aka your personal reality, and you feel like you can't escape it, and you accept life as it is and that it won't change. But that's where you're wrong. You just have to be able to shift your focus. See, most people fall into the trap of the sad diet or the standard American diet, which focuses on fast food, which is cheap and high in calories, rather than nature's fast food, which are fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts and legumes that help nourish your body so then you can flourish. It's also no mistake that 90% of Americans do not eat enough fruits and vegetables according to the daily recommendations, and that's only five servings a day. What if I told you you can have the equivalent of six superfood salads all in one that's all natural, organic, whole foods? Yes, natural, organic, whole foods. And you can make and consume it in under a minute and it only costs $4 a day. So there's no excuse that you need to shop, chop, and cook your foods because it's delivered at your front door. If this sounds good to you, check the description down below and schedule a 15 minute complimentary call so you can see how this can be a fit into your lifestyle. 
so you can change your personal reality and increase your energy, mood, digestion, sleep, and skin, all by focusing on your gut health, which is the cause to all your symptoms. Don't believe me? Just Google gut health blank and you'll find plenty of research articles that find a connection. Back to the video. You just want it to be supplement to what you're already doing, okay? So if you're not doing so well in your relationship with food, don't pick up a side chick. Don't pick up a sub, su supplement. Work on your nutrition first. The supplement is to help supplement what you are already doing. If you have a bad nutrition plan, the supplement is really not going to help you. It's like taking protein, but you're not going to the gym. You're not working out. That protein that you're, the additional protein that you're taking in, it would be helpful. It would be more beneficial if you're working out being able to break down your muscle, then your muscle needs more nutrients in order to be able to build it back up when you're unable to take in the amount of protein that your body needs to be able to rebuild. Like for example, I need to take in about 180 and 200 programs of proteins every single day. And that's by eating six different meals. Now I can get in four or five meals just by eating, but I'm going to need more supp supplementation by taking in protein. So it's going to be able to help me because I'm already at a high threshold with eating. But the protein is going to be able to help me push me over the tipping point. And this works especially well when I'm working in the middle of the school day, when I'm teaching kids and I need to be able to eat every three, three hours. And I can take a protein shake to hold me over until I'm able to actually sit down and eat. Okay. So that's how it supplements, okay? It supplements your diet. It doesn't take over your diet, okay? All right, and then number seven, which is you can try a UV lamp. I uh, wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but this is what they recommended it online, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in there. But it's just another way that you can get additional UV exposure so that you can get more melatonin. And if you think about the word melatonin, melanin, if the more melanated that, that you are, the more sunlight that you need because sunlight actually gives you energy. So if you go out for a walk, you should become more energized as a result. So if you're ever feeling tired, get up, go outside, go walking. And when you go walking, it also helps with your eye movement as well or your uh, the muscles of your eyes because when you're walking, just naturally, your eyes are constantly shifting as it's going from farsighted to nearsighted as you're naturally walking in the environment. And one of the things as Americans, where you're so accustomed to sitting down, and as, especially as teachers, having our students sit down, uh, reading something that's on the board, looking at something that's on the computer screen, and we're so fixated for a long period of time, we're so hyper-focused on a, on a certain distance of reading that our eyes aren't going, aren't shifting back and forth, that that's why we have more vision problems than other countries or lesser developed countries because they're constantly shifting back and forth between you know short-sighted and long di nearsighted and far-sightedness all right so that takes care of step number two and then that is walking okay preferably in the sunlight at the sunrise or sunset now you can always do it at different times of the day as well, but this is going to be more benefit. This is going to have more benefits during these times. All right, and then number three is to take extra steps. Now there's many ways that you can take extra steps. Usually I have an Apple Watch on me, and I, that's how I'm able to track my steps. Usually I get in about twelve thousand steps easily. I'll easily get there, and then it'll go upwards to about. 16,000 every single day. So because I'm working at night, usually I get a, get about, let's say it's about 6,000 steps or it's like 3,000, I mean three miles. And then when I'm working out, I get another like one mile while during my strength training portion. And then if I choose to walk for like 30 minutes or an hour, I'll get an additional like thousand or fifteen hundred depending on what I do and anytime that I walk I'm always walking on the incline of the highest caliber which is going to be 18 at the gym that I go to it used to be 15 but then they had got some new equipment so it went up you know three more notches and I usually walk around 2.3 and I'll get my heart rate steadily above like 125 I want that to be the lowest heart rate that I have if I start dropping below I'll start going up and I'm just staying at a moderate 
a cycle or a moderate exercise. And basically that's, I know how much that I'm, uh, I know how much that I'm uh, expending myself by if my mouth is open or closed. So if my mouth is closed the entire time, I'm, I'm staying within like a good heart rhythm. But then if I start opening my mouth, I know my heart rate is going up a little bit higher. And that's going to be like a, uh, actually I want to do like a low intensity. That's how I'm staying between like 125, 130. But if I start going above like 130, I start to breathe out through my mouth. And I'm tracking these things with my Apple Watch as I'm walking. So then I'm able to keep, you know, track of it because you can hold on to like the middle parts, but it takes like 30 seconds for it to be able to, you know, regulate your heart rate. And by that time, it may be, you know, it's just not as immediate feedback as when I have my Apple Watch on. So there's different things that you can do as well. So if you want like a low intensity workout, just make sure that your mouth is closed. Or you can, if you're with somebody else, if you're having like a full conversation without interruptions in your breaths, that's how you know it's low intensity. If it's moderate intensity, it's because you're like gasping for breath, like in between, but you're still able to have a conversation. If it's high intensity, you're unable to have a conversation. You're able to like speak in, speak in, speak in blurts. How, uh, un, net how I am speaking right now. So you'll be, you know, Actually, that's how I am speaking right now, speaking in blurts, all right, or in spurts, all right? So you'll be like, you'll be like, hey, come here. And then you'll be gasping for breath, all right? So that's how you know you have a high intensity exercise, okay? So there's different forms of exercises that you can do. There's different places that you can do them at. So you can do them at a gym. Now, when you do them at a gym, you can do strength training. You can do on the, the treadmill, which I prefer to do. If I'm doing cardio, I like to do it on the treadmill just because I can set the incline. My favorite place to do cardio is going to be outside. But since we're talking about the gym, let's stay on the gym. So strength training. Strength training is a way that you can be able to build muscle mass and increase your skeletal muscle mass as well. Because when you have stronger bones and you have stronger muscles, they're going to be the glue that keeps your body together. Okay, so the muscles are attaching to the skeleton so then you can have a more balanced structure or a stronger structure. Now, when you're building the skeletal mass, it's gonna be increase your bone density. So, if you've ever seen those 70s infomercials or different things like that where the person's falling and they can't get back up, the reason why they can't, why they can't get back up is because over the course of their time on this earth, their muscles have deteriorated because they have not used them. And that's one of the laws. You know, you don't, if you don't use it, you lose it. Okay. It's a law of entropy. All right. Anything left upon itself leads to more and more disorder. Okay. If you've ever seen a house that's been abandoned, does it get better or does it get worse? Because it's acting upon itself, it leads to more disorder. If you've ever seen a grass field left onto itself, it gets worse. Okay, so in order for something to improve, it needs to be connected to something else. So if you are strength training, you are taking your body and you are taking something on the outside like a weight and you are increasing your muscle mass by doing repetitions over and over again. You can get endurance or you can get strength. It depends on how frequently, how often that you're doing it and how many repetitions that you're doing it so like the time under tension or it can be also be like the or the volume that you're doing so if you do like four sets of five the weight is going to be higher because you're only doing five repetitions of it but you're going to build more strength and power as a result but if you're going for more endurance let's say 12 to 15 well actually we're going to say 12 and up because you can go upwards to like 50 repetitions and be able to increase your endurance. Because when you think about repetitions, it can also be like walking outside. Like how many steps are you taking? That can be your repetitions or it can be like a bicep curl and you're doing 15 or 20 repetitions, but it's still a higher threshold than what it would be if you are doing low volume or high volume at a low repetition rate or like a four to uh, rep range. Okay, so 
the gym is one of those places that you can go to be able to build your strength. And this is going to be great for as you get older because as you get older, you start losing more and more testosterone and testosterone helps to be able to build and maintain muscle mass. So as you get older, your metabolism begins to slide back and your metabolism is basically just how many calories that you're burning without exerting any additional effort. So it's like your resting metabolic rate, like how many, how many calories that you, that you burn throughout the day. Now you can increase your metabolism by exercising and working out, but if you have muscle mass built on, your muscle mass is going to burn more energy than fat because muscle burns more energy than fat does because fat is a is an energy preserving thing that you do so then you can make sure that you have it just in case of winter so that's why when the polar bears that or the bears in general when they go into hibernation they store fat during that time so then they'll be able to stay alive during that time all right so if you want to be able to burn fat, you need to be able to decrease the amount of calories that you're that you're taking in. And then you can also help by increasing the amount of calories that you're putting out. So then you can go into a caloric deficit. And when you go into a caloric deficit, you'll start to burn into or start to tap into your fat reserves. And then you'll start you begin to lose weight. All right. And there's different things that you can do as far as the amount of foods that you're eating with your macros that includes your proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. And basically, the more active that you are, and if you're strength training, if you eat more protein, you'll put on more muscle mass and then you'll cut more fat. But if you just lower your caloric deficit in general and you do more exercises, then you'll lose body weight and the body weight will include like fat and muscle as well. We want to build muscle. You need to be able to take in more protein. That's just a rule of thumb. All right. So the second thing that you can do for physical activity, you can do these at home. And I do have some at home videos on my YouTube channel. And there's actually several that I need to be able to upload as well. And here's like, I'll put two thumbnails right here for videos that you can go to to be able to check out. And I'll put the link down in the description down below so you can check that out. And these are actually really good videos. I actually have like nine more that I need to upload. And I'll go ahead and make a promise that every month I'll go ahead and upload one of those videos. The reason why I don't upload one of those videos is just because it takes a lot more time to be able to edit and upload those videos than, you know, just talking out loud because there's a lot of, I'm not going to go into it, but basically, well, I will go into it. I have to go through and trim the fat from the entire video and then I have to insert like the different countdown so then you'll be able to stay uh, stay along and stay track and then go through it one more time to be able to insert like different things that may be needed okay so this takes like if the video is like an hour long it would take like four hours to do but if I'm just narrating like I am now it would just take like double the time to be able to edit and upload as well okay uh, still at the gym no we're not we're at home so there's many things that you can do at home even cleaning up at home or washing the dishes you can be more active you can uh, go up walk up and down the hallways more often instead of just sitting down and being sedentary you can be up and moving around uh, as I said earlier for number one, you can play like your kids are up and moving around. You can engage with them moving all throughout the house and be able to, to see what they're doing and be just more active. All right. And then number three, you can swim. So swimming is one of those great exercises that you can do definitely during the summertime. You know, the sun's out, guns out, sun's out, buns out. And this time you can have your actual buns out. OK, if you. You know, want to have your buns out, you know, but, you know, that's just depending on you. But basically, you don't want to be able to, you know, be around the pool, be be in the pool, be in the water. And then swimming is one of those exercises that is, you know, overall fitness because you're constantly pushing and pulling the water. And as a I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lifelong swim instructor, 
because I've taught a lot of kids how to swim, kids and adults, how to be able to swim. And during this time, you're all constantly pushing and pulling the water in order to propel yourself through it. And this is one of those things that like when my kids were done with the swimming lessons, the kids were happy, the parents were happy because they went home and they slept like a rock. Like they got their little juices in the, in the car, they ate dinner, and then they were out like a light. So for at least two weeks, they were exerting themselves during the swim lessons. And, you know, just being out in the sun is going to give you more and more energy. And then when you're in the water and you're being physically active, you're draining yourself of calories because you become more energetic. But then you're also increasing your melatonin, which for adults, increasing your melatonin or increasing your vitamin D is very important because it helps prevent uh, osteomalacia, <laughs> osteomalacia, but basically that is the softening of your bones. And as I said earlier, with strength training, it's going to increase your bone density and your muscle mass. And by strength training, you're going to be able to increase both of those. But then by being outside and walking, it's going to also help strengthen your bones as well. And by the seven tips that I gave you to build more to increase your vitamin D, that will help you to be able to increase your vitamin D levels. And ultimately, that helps going. To, and if you go outside walking specifically, it'll help build up your melatonin, which will help you increase your um, your cardiac rhythm, which will help you with your sleep cycle. So you'll get better sleep as a result. And to tie this in to swimming with the kids, because they are out swimming in the water, getting that melatonin, getting that sun's energy, and transferring it into vitamin D, they're able to have more energy. And as, as a result, they're able to get better sleep as a as proven by the parents that constantly told me how well that their sleep, child was sleeping at night. So be outside, be more vibrant, get in the sun, and be able to increase your energy levels. But then also you'll be able to sleep deeper and increase your REM sleep or your rapid eye movement sleep. And you sleep in 90-minute cycles. So I got to the point where personally I'm getting like six hours of sleep either six or seven and a half hours and I'm specifically doing that so I'm not interrupting and like a sleep cycle and that's just a personal journey that I'm going through but the more that you know the more that you'll do and as Oprah Winfrey said what did she say when you know better you do better actually that was Maya Angelou that originally said that but Oprah Winfrey gets the credit for saying that because she made it more famous because she had a bigger platform during the 90s than Maya Angelou did. All right, so those are the four things that teachers can do to be able to increase their activity levels during the summertime so they can fall into fitness before the fall comes up during the summertime where they have more time. Now, if you're like me, you can't, You, I still work a full-time job during the summer, but I'm still getting in the same amount of exercise as I was during the school year when I was working two full-time jobs, actually. And then I had a third job as well, working at a fitness center. And that's how I got the sun, that's how I got like the, the buns out metaphor for the summertime because I saw like a couple come in or they weren't even a couple. It was like a, a male and a female come in and both of them had their head, their hair done in a bun. And I was like, I was going to say something. Like, oh, okay, I see, I see what y'all did. Sun's out, buns out. But I ain't want them to take it the wrong way, even though they probably would. We ain't going to worry about it. All right. So, you know, the sun's out, guns out, be able to get out into the sun, do some more activities as you have more time. You have eight more hours of life that you have during the summertime that we as teachers are able to have that other professions may not be able to, to have if you're a, unless you're a seasonal worker or something of that nature. But we still get paid during the summertime and we can get summertime fine before the fall comes up. And we, you know, with the fall comes the fat. And then we go through this whole cycle where we store the fat and then we want to burn it off. But we can go ahead and get into this, going in, into the habit of consistency to be able to be more fit and continue that journey throughout the school year. And as a PE teacher, this is something that I highly recommend 
just establishing a habit so they can be able to continue to execute and move. Because as adults, only about half of the population gets enough of the recommended exercise that is required or recommended, I should say. And this is from coming from the CDC and the amount of exercise that adults should be getting. I'm going to read straight from the website. Physical activity is anything that gets your body moving. Every week, adults need 150 minutes of moderate intensity physical activity and two days of muscle strengthening activity. So four days total or I want to say five hours total of exercise. So two and a half of cardio and then two and a half of car of uh, strength training is what you want to be able to have. And then once you are able to meet that threshold during the summertime, you can then transfer that into the school time. So then when you're in the classroom, you're more up and you're active because you have built your capacity during the summertime. So you, what you have done in the darkness will come to light as you are teaching the students. And one of the things that keeps me motivated as being the teacher is inspiring the youth and living like a healthy lifestyle. And that comes from the different things that I personally do, whether that what they see me eating, because they know, they know every single day I'm going to eat chicken, quinoa, and walnuts. It's a staple in my in my plan. Or it's going to be chicken, rice, and broccoli. Broccoli is always in there too. All right. So they they're going to see me eating healthy, and that's going to show them a different way that they can go. Because even though they wake up and eat takis, they wake up and they go to the gas station and they get some, they get chicken nuggets and different things of that nature. They see a different example that I'm giving them. And you can set the example of what it looks like to be a healthy adult as well. All right. So it just doesn't stay in the gym. It also extends to the classroom as well. So as always, you all stay free from the fit and free from the blessed. And as always, like, share, and subscribe, and check in to another episode of the Teachers After Dark show.